Have you ever wished you weren't in pain while doing the things you love? Dancing, gardening, painting, cooking, or hanging out and playing with your children? Have you ever wished you didn't have to see your father clenching his knees as he got up from the couch? Have you ever wondered if the future generations, beginning with our children, would not continue to suffer due to a lack of vital and necessary information? How do you physically feel today? Perhaps there's an old muscle, bone, or joint injury that still bothers you. Or perhaps you had surgery and don't feel 100%. What are you doing to stop it? What are you doing to get back into an active lifestyle? What happens if things don't change and you feel pain and lack of physical ability every day, potentially for the rest of your life? Imagine when your children do not have to suffer and feel sad with not being chosen on a team or are focusing on healthy habits and bodily routines to empower them. Imagine if you see your father doing things that keep him active, feel less pain, and be able to do those things that bring him joy. Imagine when humanity looks within and finds hope and motivation to take more control of their bodily health and achieve an active lifestyle. My name is David Newman, and I learned from a young age the benefits of health and fitness in an active lifestyle. I was fortunate to begin downhill snow skiing from a young age. That sport was and still is invigorating. While growing up, I played several sports in high school. I understood the benefits of staying strong, flexible, active, and healthy. Athletes sometimes get hurt. And I was skiing fast and furiously into my 20s and, and through college. I fell and suffered a thumb ligament injury, but behaved like so many other Americans and pushed through the pain. I pushed through the pain due to the love of the game. I ended up having surgery to my thumb about eight months after I should have, and I regained good function and recovered. I remember the struggles of regaining good function, returning to my pain-free lifestyle and doing the things that made me happy. Over the past 15 years, I've been an orthopedic surgeon and I've operated on knees, shoulders, and ankles. I've seen firsthand the joint damage from within and at times felt nearly powerless due to the amount of damage these young people had. I also understood that the educated and motivated people did better after surgery, took more control of their health, and achieve better outcomes after surgery. It was important for me to see this and gratifying when they would come to my office, being able to get back into work and living an active lifestyle. Fast forward 25 years after my surgery, and now my thumb is painful, deformed, and debilitating. It has altered my lifestyle. I stopped performing orthopedic surgery in part due to this disability. However, I still am very passionate about helping people attain, regain, maintain, and preserve healthy joint function. In my career as an orthopedic surgeon, I've seen and treated many children who had pain in part due to a lack of musculoskeletal knowledge. At times, it was due to improper backpack usage. Today with me is Sam the skeleton. He's wearing a backpack. It's important to understand that it's not the color and pattern on the backpack that makes you choose the backpack, but it should be functional. Good backpacks have padded straps and a padded back to help support and comfort the body during wear. Other backpacks have straps that come across the waist or the chest to help stabilize the backpack. The size of the backpack is important. It should be within three inches of your waist and the weight in the backpack should be no more than 15% of the person using the backpack. When filling the backpack, the larger objects go in closer to the body and the smaller ones go further away. This helps keep the center of gravity equal. Finally, the backpack should be worn with two straps. That helps keep the equality in the body. Many people suffer with neck, upper back, or lower back pain if the backpack is not worn well 
or they're doing improper things while using the backpack. In America, there's a lack of vital and necessary information regarding the musculoskeletal system. The youth represent our country's future. In schools, there's not enough focus on joint health and joint function. Although there's a focus on staying active, the underlying foundation is weak. I have with me a model of a knee joint. Within the musculoskeletal system, the coming together of two or more bones to create motion is a joint. The joints are the most delicate and least resilient components of the musculoskeletal system. This is true because the joint soft tissues do not respond well and tolerate injury. In addition, they don't reliably heal once damaged. Understanding them better and treating them well can help continue the strength of America, a powerful workforce and strong and happy individuals. There are about 30 hours in a school week and in New York State, the requirement is no more than two hours a week of physical activity. Surely this needs attention. The CDC reports that around 96% of elementary schools in the USA do not offer physical education. Two out of three children do not get any daily physical activity. One out of three of them is obese. And this trend is increasing significantly over the last 15 years. It's been shown that adolescents and children who are obese often become obese adults. Many children are leading sedentary lifestyles. They spend time sitting while traveling to and from school when there is school, spend time on the couch during the evening, or spend time sitting while at their desk. The CDC reports that children spend about seven hours looking at a TV or computer screen every day. These sedentary activities has led to a whole new category of musculoskeletal injury, the e-sports injury. And there are about 12 different musculoskeletal conditions associated with e-sporting. Other children are involved with early sports specialization, in which the National Institute of Health defines as intense, year-round participation in one sport with the exclusion of others. David Epstein in his book, Range, why generalists triumph in a specialized world, describes the childhoods of Tiger Woods and Roger Federer. And as you may know, one of them has sustained many musculoskeletal injuries and has undergone several surgeries, one just recently. The Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the United States Bone and Joint Initiative document that early sports specialization actually leads to less activity in college. The belief that Athletes have to practice a lot at one sport is not necessarily true. Elite athletes generally practice a variety of sports. Early sports specialists are twice as likely to sustain a fatigue injury and failure. There's a belief that the children actually want to be a single sports specialist. However, it's the parents and coaches that usually drive the single sports specialization. Please do not do this to your children, our children the next generation of leaders. In the last 10 years, the incidence of ACL tears and ruptures has increased. The ACL is a rope-like structure that connects one bone to the other bone in the knee. Damage to this is a serious injury and permanently changes the structure and function of the knee joint and this ligament. And up to 50% of people sustaining ACL injury and tears will undergo a total knee replacement in their future. Is that something you want for your children or yourselves? Children are, by definition, dependents. They depend on you to show them the light, the path, and the roadmap for success. Creating practical and favorable bodily routines from a young age imparts knowledge that creates a desire for joint health. These young people learn about their bodies and do things to stay functional and pain-free. This is the practice of preventive orthopedics and it's about being proactive with and for your bodies and being smart and doing things that help you stay active and feel less pain. To this there is massive value instilled. Fostering this belief from a young age is investing in our future, children. 
I work for a nonprofit organization called Joint Education Outreach. This is a fantastic and effective way to help underprivileged youth understand their bodies better. The educational symposia and engaging presentations are given by local providers. These integrity-based programs teach and connect the entire team, teachers, parents, coaches, and students. This helps stimulate conversation and raise joint health awareness for all. By merging ecosystems, we all help bring these children from dependent to independent, driven, happy, self-sufficient, and successful. Studies show that about 80% of heart disease is preventable. What if we can prevent about 80% of chronic joint pain? Joineducation.org offers tips, suggestions, tools, and resources to inspire, motivate, facilitate, and empower people to understand their bodies more and live an active and healthy lifestyle. After all, it's not only knowledge equals power, but knowledge plus action equals power. That is the power to win, succeed, achieve, and be happy and fulfilled. I speak to you all from the TEDx stage as if you are parents, grandparents, teachers, coaches, and siblings. Parents and grandparents, please do not push your children too hard. However, still embrace them and encourage them to be active. Coaches, please listen to your athletes if they complain of being hurt. Strength and agility train them to be better and sustain less severe injuries. Teachers, do not forget the power of education and that bodily education will increase the strength of your students. Ultimately, we all play our part in raising these young people with a stronger sense of physical, intellectual, and emotional self. These developing young people are our next generation of leaders, and we can get them on the right track early on in life. By working together in our communities and attaining valuable resources, we can raise these children to have a better understanding of bodily routines, their musculoskeletal system, and the benefits of staying active and healthy. Nobody likes chronic pain and the negative effects it has on our daily life, potential, and health span. I'm grateful for your time and attention today. Thank you for listening and connecting with me. By working with our communities, practicing preventive orthopedics, and gaining valuable knowledge about bodily routines, we can create a society and country that is stronger, happier, and more powerful. Thank you.